Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's good to see everyone today. I'm glad you're here. Look at all the Brooks family. Man, see if all of you, if we'd all brought all of our families, <laughs> good to have all of you here today. It really is always a pleasure to see all of you. Um, have a note here from um, uh, David and Loretta Stembridge. You know, they're the IMB, IMB missionaries that spent about a, about a month in our mission house last summer, this past summer. And uh, just want to share this with you. Uh, it's written to our church family. I just want to share it with you because this is the Lottie Moon offering time. And the, these, these, this couple benefits from our offering. So thank you for your love, prayers, and faithfulness to us in the Lottie Moon Christmas offering this past year. We were glad to spend some time together and look forward to sharing more good news of great joy over our partnership in the gospel. Blessings, Loretta and David with the IMB. And so we continue to pray for them and, uh, and all of our missionaries. It is good to see you today. Let's, let's join our hearts in prayer together. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day that you've given us. We thank you so much for this season in which we celebrate our Savior's birth. Yes. And Father, we just we do pray for David and Loretta. We pray for all the missionaries that are serving throughout the world. Yes. And as we give, may we give faithfully so that they can continue to share the gospel <coughs> with people where they serve. Yes. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Amen. And may all that we do bring honor and glory to your name. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Randy and Debbie are going to come read the scripture and light the Advent candle. Thank you. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us.
Come join me down at the front. book here Miss Lucy let me borrow that tells the Christmas story. It's got some beautiful paintings that um, really is just wonderful. I'm going to try to hold it so that everybody can see it. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus came about. Sorry all of you can't see it, but if you want to come down here and sit with the children, come on. <laughs> says his mother was his mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph when God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee Isn't that pretty the angel went to her and said greetings you who are highly favored the Lord is with you Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be but the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He'll be great. He'll be called Son of the Most High. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Also, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, and he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up, went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, firstborn a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. 
And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel. That means a lot of angels. Praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Later, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and had come to worship him. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. For this baby is God's son. He came so that all people could have good news of great joy. Merry Christmas. <coughs> Let's pray together. Thank, thank God for his son, Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus, your son and our Savior. And we thank you that we can celebrate his birthday. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, it's good to see you this morning. I hope you're ready to sing after all this. You will take your uh, red hymnals, turn to hymn number 194. 194, Old Holy Night. This is our offertory hymn. If you would please stand as we sing. <laughs>
Lord, I love you, Lord. I praise your name for this day, Lord, leading up to your son's birth, Lord. For our salvation, Lord, his birth and death on the cross, Lord. I ask, Father, that you will anoint this time, that you will use it in a mighty way, Lord, to uh, glorify your holy name. I ask, Father, that you will go with the people that's traveling, Lord, and the ones that's staying close to home. I ask for your peace and your grace, and I ask that you will bless this offer for the
maker that just walked out, if you don't know, is our youngest grandson. It's amazing how different two boys can be, and uh, such a joy, though, all oh, such a joy. Um, I've shared this before, but I'll say it again because it's true. I used to think that grandparents were the most obnoxious people in the world. I always want to talk about their grandchildren. I always want to show you pictures. Amen. And uh, 11 years ago, almost yeah, over 11 years ago, when we became grandparents, I discovered we are pretty obnoxious. <laughs> in fact, I'll show you pictures. No, <laughs> but uh, but it's, it just reminds you of, of God's grace and God's gifts. To us, um, and uh, Liam, his big brother, you oftentimes don't know he's in the room. With Maverick, you know he's where he is. He's going to be. He's going to make his presence known. But anyway, anyway, um, Christmas really is a big deal, isn't it? Just ask the store owners. They love Christmas. They love the merchandise being moved off the shelves and hopefully it's been purchased. Uh, I guess in less than in California, they don't know if it's been purchased or stolen. But it's a big deal to families because we get together as families, spend more time together at Christmas. 
It's a big deal to children because they get lots of new toys. But what's the real reason that Christmas is a big deal? What, what difference does it really make? How can a baby born over 2,000 years ago on the other side of the world make a difference in our lives today? Well, the most famous verse of Scripture reveals why Christmas is such a big deal and the tremendous difference it makes in our lives and, and the reason God wants it to make a difference in everybody's life. Amen. And that's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should never perish, but have eternal life. Amen. The question is, what difference have you and I allowed Christmas to make in our lives? Three points this morning. The first one is, because of Jesus, your past can be forgiven. Amen. Do you remember what the angel told Joseph? In Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, the Bible says, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream as Joseph, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for, and here it is, he will save his people from their sins. Amen. So since Jesus came to save his people from their sins, whose sins need to be forgiven then? The answer is simple, isn't it? Everyone needs their sins forgiven. Everyone's a sinner, and everyone needs their sins forgiven. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 3, verses 23 and 24, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Did you notice that little three-letter word at the beginning of that verse in Romans 3? A-L-L. -L. What does all include? It includes everyone, doesn't it? And since it includes everyone, that means that everyone is sinned and therefore everyone falls short of God's standard of perfect righteousness. And our only hope is found in Jesus Christ who was that baby in the manger who then died on the cross for our sins. Our only hope is found in Jesus. Amen. Listen again to verse 34, 24 of Romans 3. We are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now I want to mention just briefly there, there are four important truths about God's forgiveness. One is it's instant. You don't have to wait for God to forgive you. He forgives us the moment we repent of our sins. Amen. Two, it's undeserved. We can never, under, we can never earn God's forgiveness. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 3, 24, we are justified and is made right with him by his grace as a gift. Amen. And it's complete. When the Lord forgives us, he begins the process of transforming us so that we become more and more like him. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Amen. And one more word on forgiveness. It's to be shared. We are to forgive others. Forgiveness is a great gift to give someone. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13 says, Bearing with one another, and if one, ha if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. And here's that stand. He gives us the standard of forgiveness by which we're to forgive one another. As the Lord has forgiven you, you must also forgive one another. Amen. That's a high standard, isn't it? But it's God's standard. It's God's standard. So Christmas makes a difference because, first of all, our past can be forgiven in Christ. Second of all, because of Jesus, your present can be lived in faith. Amen. Have you noticed that throughout, and I'm sure you have, throughout the biblical accounts of the birth of Jesus, 
We, we read where angels were sent by God to tell the people most closely associated with the birth of Jesus these words. Do not be afraid. Fear not. In God's plan, Zechariah and Elizabeth, who were beyond, way beyond childbearing years, were going to be the parents of John the Baptist, the one who was going to prepare the way for Jesus in his earthly ministry. Amen. And when God sent the angel Gabriel to tell Zechariah his plan, the first thing Gabriel said was to Zechariah, do not be afraid. Amen. When the angel Gabriel is sent to Mary to tell her that she would be the mother of Jesus, he tells her, do not be afraid. Amen. When the angel is sent to Joseph to tell Joseph God's plan, he tells him, do not be afraid. When the angels are sent to tell the shepherds that Jesus has been born, they tell them, do not be afraid. Amen. Zechariah, Elizabeth, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds were told by an angel sent by God that they were going to be involved in the coming of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the angel said to each of them, do not be afraid. Amen. So what does it mean? What does the angel mean? Was it just a lack of fear that God was asking them to exhibit, or was there more? I believe God was saying more to them. I believe what God was saying to them when he told each of them, do not be afraid, was trust me. Amen. You will never understand everything that is happening or is going to happen, so do not be afraid, just trust me. Amen. God was telling them he's in control. Boy, friends, that's a word we need today, isn't it? Amen. The world looks like it's going crazy. Our nation looks like it's going crazy. Up is down, down is up, right is wrong, wrong is right. It seems like everything that we, we, we believe in the Bible teaches is normal is considered abnormal. Amen. And I believe God is saying to us as his followers, just don't be afraid, trust me. Amen. Trust me. Isn't it strange that the season in which we celebrate the birth of the Prince of Peace, by all accounts, by, by surveys and studies, is the most stressful time, one of the most stressful times of the year. Amen. As you've been out and about, and I think more people are out, and less people are out and about now, which Amazon loves. By the way, we, my wife orders so much from Amazon, I'm afraid when Christmas stops and they stop coming there every day, they're going to want to check and see if she's okay. <laughs> but if you're out and about, do you really look in the faces of people recently? There are so many people that seem to be under stress. Amen. And they're making sure they've got the right presence and they're making sure they've got everything ready for the family events and everything. And I wonder if they're missing, they're missing the true meaning of the season. Amen. Uh, Maybe they're just thinking if everything would slow down, I could focus more on Jesus if they know him. But the truth is, the world is always busy. It's always stressful. And the truth is, life is always going to have problems. Jesus never promised us a life without problems. Amen. The key is to try not to handle the problems on our own because we will fail. Amen. When we give our life to Christ, he, he takes over the responsibility to help us in every part of our life. And we can trust him to meet whatever need we have in our life. Now, the Lord doesn't promise he's going to take away all of our problems. But he does promise to be with us in the midst of our problems. Amen. So Christmas makes a difference because our present can be lived by faith as we trust God, no matter what's going on in the world or in our lives. Amen. And lastly, because of Jesus, our future in heaven can be guaranteed. Go back to that John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his, 
his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The reality is, for every person, death is, is inevitable. Amen. Every person is going to face death. Well, the only exception is if the Lord returns before we die. But whether through death or through the second coming of Jesus, we will all stand before the Lord and give an account to him for our life. Amen. Amen. So since we're going to die, since we're going to face the Lord, it seems foolish to go through life unprepared for something that is inevitable. Because after death, every person will spend eternity in one of two places, heaven or hell. Amen. You might be thinking, what a strange Christmas Eve message talking about dying in heaven and hell. Amen. Actually, it's the perfect time to talk about it. You see, Jesus did not just come to earth just to be born of a virgin. Jesus did not come to earth just to live a perfect, sinless life. Jesus came to earth to take our place on the cross and die for our sins. And then he rose from the grave, he conquered death, so that we might have eternal life through him. As the choir just sang, it's about the cross. Amen. As Christians, we really cannot look at that manger without seeing the cross also. Amen. He was born to die, wasn't he? Yes. For our sins. So, as a result of Jesus' death and resurrection, we have the opportunity to avoid hell. And if you have a personal saving relationship with Jesus Christ, you'll spend eternity in heaven. Amen. If you do not have a personal saving relationship with Jesus Christ, you spend eternity in hell. So how can you and I be prepared for death and eternity? How can we know for, with certainty that we're going to spend eternity in heaven? Well, the only way to know is to, to surrender our life to Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, to accept Him in our, and to accept God's gift of salvation and a personal relationship with Jesus by surrendering our life to Jesus Christ Amen. as our Savior and Lord. That's the gift. Amen. Jesus is the gift. Amen. But when we receive Jesus, who is the gift, there are additional gifts that, that he brings with him. And one is, we've already talked about it, is the gift of forgiveness. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. Notice where it comes from. According to the riches of his grace. Amen. The gift of forgiveness. We also have the gift of peace. John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. There it is again. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. Amen. It's found in Jesus, isn't it? Amen. There's the gift of eternal life. Romans 6, 23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As we look at these gifts, I want you to notice four things. One is they're personal. They came in a person, Jesus Christ. And they're received in a person, each one individually. Amen. They're practical gifts because they're exactly what we need. They take care of our sin, the sins of our past, the fear of our present, and the uncertainty of the future. <clears throat> These gifts are priceless because they cost Jesus Christ his life, which shows us how much he loves us. Amen. Remember, for God so loved the world, which is every one of us, that he gave his one and only son. Amen. These gifts are permanent. They last forever throughout all eternity. <clears throat> so Christmas makes a difference. Because our eternal future in heaven can be guaranteed if we surrender our life to Jesus Christ as Savior and as Lord. Amen. So let me ask you this morning, have you received, received God's gift of Jesus Christ? Have you surrendered your life to him? Have you surrendered your life to him, surrendered it totally to him? 
and, and ask him to be your Savior. Ask him to be your Lord. If not, why not today? If you have surrendered your life to Jesus and he is your Savior and Lord, maybe you haven't been living for him. Maybe, maybe you, you haven't been following him as you, sh as you should. Maybe you haven't been obeying him. Maybe you've been trying to do things your way. Why not rededicate your life today? Amen. What better day than Christmas Eve, the, the day before the day we <coughs> celebrate our Savior's birth, to give your life to Christ, Amen. to rededicate your life to Christ. You see, Christmas really is a big deal. Amen. And it's not about the shopping, as much as we all enjoy that. <laughs> I do enjoy it more now that it's online and Karen takes care of all of it. And by the way, what that means is when we give gifts to the grandchildren, I'm a surprise that the grandchildren are all what I gave them. <laughs> But Christmas really is a big deal. Amen. And it's really not about the shopping. It's really not about the family meals or the family gatherings. Amen. It's all about Jesus, isn't it? Amen. Now, there's nothing wrong with the shopping. There's nothing wrong with the family meals. There's nothing wrong with the family gatherings. All that is wonderful, but... Let's not allow that to sidetrack us from Jesus. Amen. I, we, we enjoy the street we live on. And this year we've noticed some, some really cool Christmas decorations. Across the street from us there are Christmas dinosaurs inflated. I love them. They're, they're the cutest things. The grandchildren love them. All up down the street there's all this stuff. The preacher in me, now there's nothing, I don't find anything wrong with any of that. But amidst all of that, we have a simple manger scene with lights on it. Amen. Now I'm not going to go up and down the street criticizing my neighbors. I, I love their decorations. We, we, we take the kids out there and show them when it's night and they're all lit up. I want them to see them. But amidst all of that, I want, and there are other people on our street that have nativity scenes and they have the manger scenes. They have all about Jesus. We're not the only ones. I just think in the midst of all of that, I want, to, I want to, that, that simple reminder to anybody who rides by that it's about Jesus. Amen. It's about Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Because this really is a big deal. There's so many times we seem, all of us seem to put other things ahead of what it's really all about. And Lord, forgive us for that. But Jesus, your Son, our Savior, coming into the world, born of a virgin, lived a perfect sinless life, dying on the cross for our sins, rising from the grave on the third day. That is a huge deal. It's life transforming. It's eternity transforming. So in the midst of all the busyness that we, that we go through, all the things that we do, help us, Lord, to stay focused on Jesus. Amen. And not just the baby in the manger, but the Jesus on the cross and the empty tomb of Jesus. Because this is the day our, we celebrate our Savior's birth. Lord, if there's anyone here this morning that has never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, I pray they'll come this morning. Maybe there's some that have done that but never made a public profession. I pray they'll come this morning and make a public profession. What better day, Lord? Oh, Lord, maybe there's some there's this morning that, that, that belong to you, but maybe they've not been living as fully committed as you would like for them to. Yes. May they come and rededicate their lives this morning. What better day than the Christmas, Christmas Eve? Father, as, as we have this time of commitment, you speak to our hearts. 
And may we obey you as you speak to us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of decision is hymn 189, Child in the Manger. If you need to respond, won't you come as we stand and sing? Thank you. 